Hello, wonderful people. We are subscribers all over the world. This is Okute Daily Talk from my own corner, bringing to you this early Monday morning broadcast, being the 12th day of the month of December in the year 2022. If you have not subscribed to this channel, or if this is your first time of hearing my voice or watching my program or my content, please endeavor to do that as soon as pos possible. Try to turn on the notification button so that you will be the first to be notified each time we go live or post something new on our channel. We are always on time, we are always on track, and we don't paint word, we don't miss word, we go straight to the point, and we speak to you the undiluted truth about what is happening around us, about the, the political class, the political elites who have vowed to hold this country at ransom, but coming 2023, they will find a different ball game altogether. They have been trying in one way or the other to frustrate the, 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 the effort of those ones who stand sincerely to, to bring this country out from where it has been put to at this very point in time. So please, yeah, we don't want to waste much time. We just want to go straight into the business of the day. Tighten your seatbelt. Give me your listening ear as we proceed with the headlines. Then after, we come back to take the news as it ought to be. Fire goes Anambara timber market traders seek support from the government. This is tragedy. And may all those who have been affected take solace in the Lord. 11 killed, 30 injured in Bauchi and Koji and Kogi uh, crash. Terrorists open fire on casino traders and kill four. That is our the hometown of our dear Prince Do. Who keep jumping from one country to the other why his home is on fire that an evil added that used to say that when you know you're not walking a man whose heart is on fire does not pursue that but this government and our country are the ones that the house will be on very high inferno and they'll be busy pursuing rats why the main property in the house will keep burning and that is the the replicant of what is happening in the nigerian government of today nigeria's plastic waste hits 1.25 MT United Nations Celine Dion battles their incurable disease cancel shows so pity our dear uh, Celine Dion you will, you will fall back to your feet I'm very sure of that our prayers is on you on daily basis you are being loved by almost everybody so my dear no matter whatever you are battling today just see it as one of the challenges that we face as a human being. Because every human being or every living soul ought to be passing one challenges or one difficulty or the other. So please, my people, let us start our news from this side of the world. Uh, let's start from the Canada, where our able singer and the most loved uh, Celine Dion is speaking to his fans, which I am among them and also to the world at large. So please listen attentively so that you will know exactly what our able singer Celine Dion from Canada is telling us. Celine Dion battles rare incurable disease, cancel shows. Veteran Canadian singer Celine Dion has opened up on her battle with stiff person syndrome. This is a rare disease that you can find in, a, in a, one in a million times. A neurological uh, disorder that causes one's muscles to tense uncontrollably. The 54-year-old made the announcement in a video on her Instagram page on Thursday where she disclosed that her 2023 shows had been moved to 2024. She noted that the rare disease which occurs in one in a million people had caused her to have uh, uh, spams. S P A S M S. Please do not misunderstand me. I am talking this concerning to the Facebook. This is not a sexual violent uh, uh, content or whatever you may call it. He said it had caused her to be having spams. That's S P A S M S. So do not misunderstand me. The power of love singer said, "Hello everyone. I'm sorry it is taking me so long to reach out to you." I miss you all so much and can't wait to be on stage talking to you in person. As you know, I have always been an open book and I wasn't ready to say anything before, but I am ready now to tell the masses, the public and the people and my lovers and viewers and fans all over the world 
what the, the, the veteran singer is passing through all this world. I have been dealing with problems with my health for a long time and it's been really difficult for me to face my challenges and to talk and to talk about everything that I have been through, going through. Recently, I have been diagnosed with a very rare neurological uh, disorder called the Stiff Person Syndrome, which affects one in a million people. While we are still learning about this rare condition, we now know this is uh, this is what's been causing all the spams I have been having. I have been having. The caption of the video read: Celine Dion reduces uh, spring ch shows to 2024 and cancels eight of her summer 2023 shows. This is really heartbreaking. But our dear Celine, our dear Celine Dion, we we really we really uh, uh, um, we sympathize with you. Uh, not not dead. As long as his uh, life is concerned, we are all to have challenges. And whatever it is, whatever uh, that has been diagnosed, the Almighty Tuko Kiyabiyama will set you free. Just believe it. The doctors can prescribe, but the gods heals. So you will be free, my dear Celine Dion. I'm a lover and I'm, I'm your long-time fan, even from my childhood up to this my old age now. So nothing will happen to you, my dear. Fire Ghost Anambra Timber Market Traders seek support. Goods is estimated at millions of Naira have been destroyed after fire got some shot at a Obosisi, a timber market in Onusha, Anambra State. Punch Metro gathered the incident happened late on Saturday and about 28 light shops jointly shared the premises. The chairman, Bridgehead Markets Amalgamated Traders Association, Chinedu Eze. As a weekend, as a weekend, who spoke to journalists on Sunday said the fire was caused by machines used in the in a smoothing finished wood products like doors and chairs, according to them. He, however, noted that traders in the market battled to control the inferno before the arrival of men of the state fire service. While lamenting the cost of their damage, he called on the state government to assist the victims in getting back to business. The state chief fire officer Martin Abuli said he dispatched his men to the scene after getting a distress call from members of the public. He said around 7:30 p.m. of December 12, 2022, the Anambra State Fire Service received a distress call of a heavy fire at Obosisi Timber Market, Onosha, by GUO Plaza. Immediately, we deployed our fire truck and firefighters in the scene. We battled and controlled the fire. The cause of the fire is unknown. Although the fire destroyed some shops, no life was lost. We must know that we are at the park at the peak of the hammer time period. Avoid anything that can cause fire at this season. 11 killed, 30 injured in Bauchi Kogi crashes. Not fewer than 11 people have lost their lives in the separate accident in Bauchi and Kogi states. Five people died and five sustained serious injuries in a crash at Rama village along the Razo Bauchi Road, Bauchi State. The Federal Road Safety Corps Bauchi State Command confirmed the crash to journalists on Sunday. The state uh, sector commander Yusuf Abdullahi said the crash occurred on uh, Saturday, December 10 of 2022 around 8.14 p.m. According to him, it took men of the FR. SC seven minutes to get to the accident scene. The crash was caused by wrongful overtaking by one of the drivers. It involved two commercial vehicles, an ash-colored Toyota bus with the with the number plate DRZ 356ZD, and a blue Mercedes-Benz articulated trailer with no, no no number plate as of the time of the crash. When we got the call informing us of, cra of the crash, our rescue team rushed to the scene for a rescue operation. They immediately evacuated the victims to the Darazo General Hospital for treatment and confirmation. It was there at the hospital that a medical doctor confirmed six of them dead. Six other people sustained different uh, degrees of injury, while only one person escaped unhurt, Abdullahi stated. In a related, in a related development, six persons lost their lives and 25 were injured in an accident on Saturday in Okene, Kogi State. 
punch metro gala that the loan crash involved an uh, Ivko trailer conveying cows and people. A source said the accident occurred along the Okene Ogori Road, just a few kilometers to Ogori uh, Magongo, adding that 45 people were involved. The sector commander FRSC Kogi State, Steve Daolong, who confirmed the accident, said a joint team of his officers and the police took the victims to Ageva General Hospital, Okene, Ajunko Clinic, and Mataniki, Maternity Ibilo, and uh, Obagidi General Hospital, Okene, as well. That is all you need to know about the crash. The crash is not a uh, it's not a, a, a communal crash or whatever you may think of it. It is just an accident that occurred in those areas. And this Kogi Okene, 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 Okene have been claiming life since I know of this Okene. That's a, there's what, there's a, um, what would I call it? There's a mountain or hill in Okene that whenever any car is climbing that mountain, you have to be extra careful. For those of us that is plying those roads, I have been on that road for years. Uh, thank God that uh, nothing happened to me as of the then time of applying those rules because that's that's okay here, man. It's something something else. It is a, it is it is a kind of a, a a road whereby even if you don't have any any um, passengers on you climbing that road, it seems like uh, going to heaven. I wonder how the federal government or anyone that constructed constructed that road made it that way. A, a road like that have to be zigzag. You cannot make it to be straight forward like that. At a point when some car will be climbing at the middle of the road, they don't have strength they're going to climb because of the load, kind of load they carry, and what they will result, they will result to accident. Either they flip back or they flip near the nearby bush. So they have to do something about that load. That load has been claiming lives as of, uh, I'm talking of, as of uh, 1992, 93, which I have been plying that road. So that is what I noticed and that is what I witnessed during my days of. Uh, of uh, uh, doing a, a, to, a tomato and the onion business from the north. Terrorists open fire on the Katina traders and kill four. This is our the homeland of our Ebu Presdo, who is busy going from one country to the other. And as you know, the manama before Apuama, according to the according to my Ibo brothers, that uh, the, the charity begins at home. But our own uh, politicians, their own charity always begins at London or Dubai or US. That is where they are being uh, honored. Whereby every time they keep traveling, to the extent that uh, even King Charles number two was asking our president, do you have a house in London? <laughs> and our president was laughing and said, uh, I don't have a house. Uh, I even, uh, the only house I have is in Nigeria, is a Daura Casino. But you fled that place. Even uh, even uh, even uh, they celebrated you there more than the people that own the uh, own the, 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 the country. And you say you don't have a house. So that means all this tra frivolous traveling up and down is uh, hotels, right? Child, Nigeria economy. And we are shouting there's no money. It's all right. Terrorists on Sunday killed four traders in Jibia local government area of Casino State. Punch Metro gathered that the traders who were from Zandam village were going to a market close to the local government headquarters when they ran into the terrorists. The spokesperson for the Casino State Police Command, S.P. Gambo Issa, confirmed the incident. He revealed that the terrorists shot five traders, adding that four died on the spot. Issa said, Yes, the terrorists shot at five traders, four died on the spot, while one was injured and rushed to a hospital in Casino for medical attention. The resident added that the incident caused fear among other traders already at the market. Jibia town was, however, calm on Sunday when this reporter visited. That is all you need to know about the shooting of uh, market women and, and uh, men in Castena, the hometown of our great President Mamadou Buhari. Nigeria's plastic waste hits 1.25 MT, United Nations asserted. Plastic waste in Nigeria has been on the increase due to the, the increased consumption of plastics by citizens across the country, the United Nations has said. It disclosed this through the United, uh, Nation, okay, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, stressing that the consumption of plastics 
plastics in Nigeria jumped from 116.26%, which in a period of 15 years, to 1.25 million tons. United Nations Industrial Development Organization, country representative and regional director for West African, Jim Bankole, disclosed this at the inauguration of the steering committee for the project tagged Promoting Sustainable Plastic Value Change Through Secular Economy Practices. In this speech, which was made available to our correspondent in Abuja on Sunday, Bankole, okay, Bankole said, as the most populated nation with the largest GDP growth domestic product on the African continent, Nigeria plastics work, plastic waste problem is on the increase. These are things that people use for business. These are things that people can convert to things. Nigeria can never change. The only thing they depend on, they can never manufacture anything other than import, import, import. Look at how robots littered everywhere. Something that somebody, people are, have taken it, you to take it as part of their business in other countries. Recycle it and use it for other things. This is a very big, multi-million dollar business that the people are wasting in Nigeria. And they are boasting they, are, they have the highest GDP in uh, all the Africans and the most populated. But what are they producing? Common toothpick, Nigeria can never produce. They import toothpick from China. That is how bad it has gotten. That is how bad governors that have that, that have ravaged the economy of Nigeria from where for what it's supposed to be before to where it was or to where it is at the very moment. May the Almighty to care by my help us. This is based on its increased consumption from 578,000 tons of plastic in 2007 to about 1,250,000 tons. Therefore, the per capita plastic consumption has grown by 5% annually from 4 kg to 6.5 kg. It is estimated that each citizen would consume about 7.5 kg of plastic per year. He noted that our over the years, the mismanagement of plastic waste was not only contaminating the land ecosystem but was also being released into the marine environment thereby polluting it and threatening by biodiversity and the negative negatively impacting the blue economy the un official said mismanaged plastic and ineffective waste management is also a source of ghg greenhouse gas emissions according to the world bank plastic waste accounts for 12% of the total amount of municipal solid waste generated globally. However, only 14% of collect of collect 14% are collected for recycling, while only 9% are recycled. To address the concern in Nigeria, the Minister of Environment, Mohamed Ablai, who inaugurated the committee, said it is in the response to these challenges that the Federal Ministry of Environment, in collaboration with relevant stakeholders, took steps to address the plastic issue uh, holistically by adopting the circular economy model. Let them open recycle company in Nigeria. That is how all these things can be contained. Instead, they choose to loot the money and save it uh, uh, abroad. In this wise, we have developed the national policies on uh, solid waste and plastic waste management to promote environmental protection resource and energy efficiency, secular, secular economic practices and enhance the conservation of a neutral resource through sustainable production and consumption. That is all you need to know about the plastic that have been wasting in Nigeria, not in Africa or in Nigeria alone. How many tons of plastics are wasting over there and there's nothing is being done about it. Oil theft. Reps meet Tompolo back 48 billion naira pipeline surveillance contract to him. I thought this thing was a 4 billion naira before. Now it shall move to 48 billion naira. The federal lawmakers asked security agencies to, to stop destroying equipment seized from vandals, but instead convert them to good use. The delegation of the House of Representatives has expressed support for the pipeline surveillance contract between the federal government and the Tantita Security Service Nigeria Limited, a company owned by a former leader of the movement for the emancipation of Niger Delta, 
government uh, Epumo uh, Polo, also known as Tom Polo. The 24 member delegation led by the deputy majority leader of the house, Peter Akpatasen, APC Edo, met with the Epumo Polo on Wednesday as part of the three day oversight visit to the creeks and the riverland areas of Delta State. The federal government in August awarded a pipeline surveillance contract reportedly worth 48 million naira per year. 48, 48 billion naira per year. Okay, 4 billion naira per month. Okay, okay, I understand. To Mr. Ekumopoulos' company to check massive oil theft in the region. Despite the controversy that trailed the contract, the company has reportedly discovered several illegal connections into major pipelines, according to the reports. The company discovered at least 58 illegal connections in Delta and Bayelsa states. The massive oil theft in the creek have reduced daily production to below 1 million barrels per day. However, the NNPCL recently claimed that daily production has increased to 1.6 million barrels per day from 937,000 barrels per day reported in September. Speaking at the meeting in Warren, Mr. Agbatterson commended the Tantina Security Service for the crackdown for the crackdown on oil theft in the region, adding that there is a need to extend the surveillance to offshore platforms. He said the House is willing to consider legislative support to aid the company. According to him, improvement in production will help to address the financial situation in the country. As a result of the recent partnership between Tantita, your, your company and NNPC, we have seen significant improvement in the ability of this country to produce hydrocarbons, which basically is the major foreign earnings for this country. As concerned citizens, we believe whatever that can be done to ensure improvement in the nation's capacity to, to earn income for funding development and reducing borrowing, which has become a chain of concern to many Nigerians, that effort must be supported instead, according to them. Mr. Akbatterson added that there is still more to be done if we can achieve currently what we are experiencing in this area. Also, in an offshore, Nigeria will have no reason to borrow money to fund the budget and to borrow money to fund projects that we do daily need as a nation. Speaking on activities of security agencies in the region, the deputy majority leader asked security personnel to stop destroying equipment seized from the vandals. Rather, the equipment should be converted to good use. Another member of the delegation, Julius Pond, the PDP Delta, informed his colleagues that, that uh, the insecurity in the region has affected the economic activities of the people around those areas. Mr. Pond, who responds brutal federal constituency of Delta State, said it will require joint efforts to end oil theft in the region. He commended members of the armed forces for their work in the region. I am a riverline boy. If you have been here some months ago or three months ago, period with Antita coming to the play, you will know what I am about to say. The, the, the degradation that we suffered, we suffered, the spill, the aquatic damage, no farming and no fishing but just within three months we have seen a clean environment that shows it is a departure from what is used to be so we are making progress and my question is as a broadcaster and as a presenter all those boys that has that have engaged yourself in a in illegal bunkering or illegal uh, theft of the oil what are their fate now are the government giving them works because that is what is causing all these things I have uh, listened to most of the interviews from the young men or uh, from the youths who are involved in all this oil theft and the illegal refining in the region. Their excuses will, will really shock you why they resort to, to be doing such illegal business, which claim most of their lives at every point in time. Because most of them are graduates in a little in a petrochemical, uh, uh, in, I mean petrochemical uh, engineering, and most of them. They, they graduated with A's. I mean, a very good result. Why they go to all those to study that petrochemical engineering? Simply because there is a lot of refineries in their own land. And the oils 
the Nigerian uh, government I used to boast I was one of the countries that produces crude oil, gas and the rest of them it from their land. So for them to go to school and graduate with first class in petrochemical engineering means they will find work either in NPC, IGIP or other uh, all these uh, um, uh, petroleum companies that they have around the, within uh, the axis of Niger Delta. But at the end of the day, they found out that all these men, they will graduate finish, nobody will give them work. Instead, they choose to employ foreign workers to work in their own land, in their own oil. And the, all those uh, oil companies are not being fair to the land. They're supposed to give them good amenities, actually good roads, good schools, electricity. They're supposed to have 24 hours uninterrupted power supply in that region. In those regions, I mean, all those nine, nine states that is producing oil. But what did they get? The reverse is the case. So what did all these, all these young boys do? When they find what they, they cannot see, a graduate with first class will result in riding KK and Okada. It's only in Nigeria it happens. Okay, imagine uh, this, uh, uh, what did they call him? A Pantami or what did they call him? This uh, um, terrorist uh, link uh, minister. They came out and they make an announcement that there's no any recruitment in their sector in the communication sector but secretly he go and employ his own son to be in a position that the boy cannot even do anything from from uh, studying in a private university in a in a um, uh, in abuja he transferred the boy to finish his education in the uk after the boy finished the education the boy have not get any single experience or whatsoever not even uh, this uh it the people used to do at the it i be uh, youth cops he didn't serve anywhere no experience yet he want to implore the boy in a position that the boy is not even qualified to be simply because they want the corruption to continue employing somebody who have no any idea of the position you are putting to him you are killing the company and also killing the economy of the country what can that boy contribute in that area that is what i'm asking what can he contribute the answer is zero he contribute nothing and according to the close source they say the boy have not worked anywhere since he graduated from the university in uh, in London, it had been from one uh, country to the other, following the uh, house artist and actress, and following the start traveling from one country to the other. Is that how he's going to work and they make a good impact in that very sector? That sector will keep on dying day by day, and they will keep on blaming the presidency. The problem we are having in Nigeria is really, is really, is very, very big. What I mean big, I mean very, very big. The overall goal is that uh, we ensure that Nigerian crude improve, improve by way of production. So we are happy that that has been achieved. And if you ask me again, we are making progress, Mr. Pondi said in his, uh, 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 in his interview. I want to thank all of you very well for coming. I will not disappoint you. We will do our part and I still want all of you to do your own part over here in urged. In his closing remarks, the chairman of the House of Committee on Petroleum Upstream, Musa Sarikin Ada, APC Sokoto, affirmed that the existing cooperation will help in overcoming viral challenges of oil theft in the oil industry, especially in this part of the country. What development have you people given to these people producing this oil? The reverse is the case. Some of the members of the delegation include Mayowa uh, Afin Folaren, APC Ondo, Uzoma Abonta, BDP Abia, Segus Ogun, BDP Edo, and Boma Godhead, BDP River State. That is the people that attended the sermon on uh, how they are going to better the, the, the oil theft and the rest of them in our own land. You after urging war to abandon coal uk approves no new coal mine have you seen it this is the problem we have in nigeria they are they are the one that confused our country to forget about the coal nigeria was a coal producing country they have coal in enugu state but they have abandoned all and focused on oil now the same uk that tell them to abandon coal is now approving new coal mine what a word this development is coming a month after the Global Climate Change Summit in Egypt and also at the same time as the UN Bio, Bio, Biodiversity Conference happening in Canada. 
One year after convincing the world to consign coal to history, the UK on Wednesday approved a new coal mine. Michael Gave, UK Housing and Committee Secretary, approved the plan to open the coal mine in Cumbria. The proposed mine would dig up uh, cooking coal for steel production in the UK and across the world. Coal is the dirtiest of all fossil fuels, producing almost twice the emissions of natural gas. In defense of an outright violation of its own campaign against fossil fuels, supporters of the mine say it will create 500 jobs and cut coal importation. The mine had initially received appeal in 2020 but was halted in 2021 following the UK's presidency of the COP26. This development is coming a month after the Global Climate Change Summit in Egypt and also at the same time as the UN Biodiversity Conference happening in Canada. The UN, the new coal mine has, uh, has been uh, met with several objections, the top of which comes from Alok Sharma, COP26 president. The Sharma in a tweet said, opening a new coal mine will not only be a backward step for UK climate action, but also damage the UK's hard-won international reputation through our at COP26 presidency as a leader in the global fight against climate change. During the UK's presidency of COP last year, Mr. Sharma, on several occasions, cajoled and, and connived state parties to defund coal projects. On 16th of uh, September of 2021, in his speech on Energy Action Day, he said, because we want to avoid the worst effects of climate change, we must consign coal power to history. There is really, there is really no question about it. He also noted in his speech that uh, the UK planned to phase coal out entirely by the end of 2024. On July of 2021, in an interview with Reuters, Mr. Sharma again said, I have very clear that I want COP26 to be the COP where we consign coal power to history. He added that the UK Climate Change Committee said the mine will increase carbon emissions by 0.4 mt annually. Interesting, interestingly, 85% of the coal produced will be for export, not domestic use, as two, as two major UK steel producers will not necessarily use much of the coal partly due to the due to its composition and the sulfur context. So that is all you people need to know about the current situation on the coal mining after telling the world to turn down their own coal because it is of no use. Now they have uh, uh, um what would I call it? They, 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 they have approved new coal mine in the UK. What a world. The seven others uh, of the mineral resources and now you want to dig up your own to for export or not for their use for export can you imagine that well we have no more to say we we'll keep on looking at them since they think they have brain but their brain is what is brainless it's only god that can judge us all that is all i have for my people this very point in time this very early morning broadcast coming from okute daily talk uh one two three four five if you have not subscribed to my channel please endeavor to do that as soon as possible i still remain your one and only okute daily talk from my own point of view so please i'm signing out from this very broadcast and i wish us a very fruitful monday whatever we are going to do today we are going to prosper and this week shall be the best week for us so far and anyone that's looking for god's blessing more surely get it in one way or the other so whatever you are doing remember we are still here for you to bring to us the very good news that will enlighten our hearts to make this week a memorable one and enjoyable one for all of us so until i come your way again please remain blessed and still remember that i still i am your one and only okute daily talk take care and have a good day bless you and bless the words of your hand I'm signing out. Bye for now.